Randomized experiment is the golden standard of empirical research. However, there are ways that randomized experiments can go wrong. So just the fact that you randomized your study sample into treatment and control groups and put those two groups into different procedures and then measure a difference in the outcome variable of, of interest does not necessarily imply that you have a valid causal claim. In this video I will explain a couple of problems that experiments may face. When we talk about experiments we need to remember that there are two important properties of an experiment. So two things that make an experiment. First we have the randomization here and then we have the treatment group and control group. And this provides valid causal evidence if the randomization works or now sample size is large enough and there are no, no, no problems with the procedures. When we talk about validity of conclusions from experiments we need to consider internal validity and external validity. External validity is basically whether uh, the results from our sample or our population generalizes to other populations of interest. And a typical problem in external validity is the use of student samples. So for example if we want to study how uh, directors make decisions in companies and we study that through students who do a business simulation in a classroom the external validity is pretty questionable. Student samples are not always bad but we have to consider the context. For example if you want to study personal use of IT then at least I wouldn't have any problems in using students because our students and general population are more similar in that than our st how st students in classroom works is similar to our boardrooms for example. But there are also issues related to interim validity. Issues that make your causal claim questionable even for the population of interest. So for example we can, we can study students in a class and only try to generalize to what those students would do outside the class and, and be not able to generalize because of these issues. There is a, a nice review of these issues in experimental design by Sirio Lonati and his co-authors from journal, in Journal of Operations Management and they have this summary table that lists certain issues that they, they explain in detail in the article and they divide these issues into statistical issues and uh, internal validity threats. I'll focus on the, on the first set of issues because these statistical issues perhaps except for uh, excluding non-compliers is uh, more general. So if you uh, don't take into consideration non-independence of observations then any inference with any research design is pos possibly invalid. So let's take a look at these issues here, these internal validity issues and I'll go through an example that demonstrates this on the next slide. So the first uh, on the list is unfair comparison and demand effects. So that's basically two different problems. The unfair comparison can be understood uh, with the poison and medication example. So if you have your, your treatment group receives the, the medication and your control group receives the poison, the fact that the outcomes are different does not mean that the medication worked it means that it could also mean that it, the medication didn't work but poison just made people feel a lot worse or in an extreme scenario it might, might, mean, might mean that the medication actually is harmful but poison is more harmful for people. So the important thing here is that your control group should be really neutral and not like this, this good and, and bad comparison. Another is a uh, treatment effect and uh, sorry demand effect and demand effect uh, relates to uh, the subjects in the experiment trying to infer what the experimenter is trying to study and how the experimenter would like them to uh, respond and uh, this is something that has been studied and there's evidence that this phenomenon actually exists even if people are not consciously trying to satisfy the demands of the experimenter. So that's the first group of issues. The second group is uh, non-consequential decision environments. And this is particularly uh, relevant for experimental vignette studies 
where we send surveys, two versions of surveys that describe the same scenario with small variations and then ask people questions about that scenario. So if you just fill in a survey form, there are no consequences for, for you from your actions and uh, it's not clear if you would respond the same way if there actually were consequences. I'll show you an example on, on the next slide. Then there is a uh, deception and uh, deception does not necessarily invalidate the study. But there are two arguments against deception. One is the ethical argument that researchers should not lie to their subjects. So if you deceive, intentionally mislead your subjects, then you are being unethical. Uh, there is some debate on whether being unethical this way is acceptable in some scenarios where the results would be very important to get. So there are some important studies in the history that have been done using deception and some of those studies like the Milgram's experiment would be considered really unethical now. Then there is another issue about deception. So if you have a, a lab where you invite people, particularly if you invite students there and you know that the students will be uh, subjects in a couple of uh, experiments during their studies. If you deceive them and they find out that they were lied to in the first experiment, how are they going to take you seriously in your second experiment? So the arguments uh, against deception is the ethical argument and it's also the argument that we are kind of like spoiling our subject pool by, by lying to them. Then uh, the fourth on the list is manipulation checks before the dependent variable. And the idea here is that the manipulation check, uh, what it means is that if we, for example, give people medication and uh, that is a kind of medication that people take at home. And uh, then they come back for measurement a week later, we ask them, did you actually take the medication? because some of our subjects might have, might have forgotten to take the medication and that needs to be taken into account in the statistical analysis. In practice, that will be a case for using instrumental variables. Problems arise, however, if we do a manipulation check before the uh, measurement of the dependent variable. And it is then possible that the respondents, particularly if we uh, measure, uh, do survey-based measurement or some other kind of measurement where we measure people's attitude, then the subjects may infer based on our manipulation check what we are actually studying and then trying to adjust their response accordingly. So let's take a look at an example and uh, how these effects might manifest in, in a study. So this is a, a completely made up study. And uh, this is an expert in a Vignette study. The idea is that we present two scenarios. One individual receives one of these scenarios in a survey, but not the other. And this is randomized. So half of our informants receive scenario one, half of our informants receive scenario two here. And uh, then we ask, based on these two scenarios, two things. Is the company performing ethically? That is our manipulation check. And uh, would you buy the shoes? So uh, we have uh, shoes that are less expensive than major brand shoes and you really want to have the shoes. You hear that this company uses child labor and uh, you hear that this company is uh, behaving very ethically. They have a corporate social res responsibility program that they just announced. So how are these issues listed in the Lonati article manifested in this example? So first of all, we have an unfair comparison. So we are not comparing uh, a bad company against a neutral company, but instead we are comparing very unethical company against a very ethical company. So we cannot say that doing unethical things would be bad because uh, the baseline is not, not doing unethical things, but the baseline is doing good for, your, for the society. Also, we cannot say that CSR programs would be helpful because the baseline is, is not no CSR, but it's very unethical behavior. 
So that's an unfair comparison. It's a poison and medication comparison. We don't, if there's a difference, we don't know which one causes it. Then there's a demand effect. So if you read this short vignette, you see that this is just basically facts. And then there is this statement that stands out, even if it wasn't bolded, that this company is using child labor. So that is not something that you would perhaps know if you were to buy athletic shoes. And then there's the other thing here that this company is using CSR, is implementing a CSR program. That is also information that you probably wouldn't know or wouldn't notice even if it was given to you in a broader context. But in isolation, this stands out and it is clear that the experiment here is about ethics or corporate social responsibility or, or something like that. And that guides our responses. So if we uh, see this kind of vignette here, then we pretty much know that the, uh, the researcher wants us to answer no here. We would not buy these shoes. And same here, the CSR would imply to us that the researcher is studying social responsibility. We are supposed to say that we buy these shoes, even if they are all less expensive for some reason. So that's the demand effect. This is also non-consequential uh, decision. Why it's non-consequential is that this is just imaginary money. So let's say that the, uh, the brand name shoes cost uh, 100 euros and these cheaper sho shoes cost 70 euros. If you really are short on cash and you need new shoes, you might think that, well, this, this time, maybe the company will uh, be better in the future. It's just this time that I buy these, these shoes from this slightly unethical company. If there's real money on the line, people may behave differently than uh, when it's just a question of what would you do in this imaginary scenario. Then uh, the final thing in this example is the manipulation check. And this clearly demonstrates that the manipulation check question is here. Is the company either in scenario one or scenario two behaving ethically? So that really gives out the um, purpose of the experiment. If we read this manipulation, manipulation check and which purpose of this check is to, uh, to basically ensure that, that we have received the manipulation. So we have noticed that one of these is more ethical than the other one. And this underlines that this is a study about ethics and then people will respond accordingly saying yes to the ethical case, no to the unethical case because that is what they think that the experimenter wants to see.